Welcome to Yokomo, an ETS online course on a competence-based development for youth workers. My name is Rita Bergstein. I'm working at Jugend für Europa, which is the national agency of the Erasmus Plus and the European Erasmus Plus Youth in Action and European Solidarity Corps in Germany. Uh, why I'm sitting here, I guess it's not only because of this, uh, but I was working in the past for Salto Training and Cooperation, and I was involved in developing the competence model for youth workers to work internationally. And uh, I'm Gisele Evra Markovic, and I uh, I work for Salto Training and Cooperation, where I coordinate the European Training Strategy, which is the, the framework uh, in which the competence model for youth workers working internationally uh, is embedded. And uh, back then, I was working as a freelance trainer, cooperating with Rita and Artura Zeltuva to develop the competence model. Okay, behind us, there is one of the competence area, as we call it, within the competence models. And this is collaborating successfully in teams. Of course, this is us here. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we are still working together. It was a kind of a natural flow that, that it appeared at a certain moment and that we went this direction. But personally, for me, looking back, it's a lot about um, <clears throat> providing really step-by-step -step tools and ways to enable systemic change within youth work. And um, personally, I think we have really provided um, a complex, complex, but also, uh, yeah, understandable in its way. Um, an, an approach to provide systematic change to enable others to take it up and work with it. This is for me the, the personal conclusion that I got after uh, thinking about it. Yeah, for me, it's, uh, I mean, it goes along with what Rita said now. Um, but I think if I still look at the competence model uh, today, for me, it's really a uh, um, a way to describe, I think still in a quite complex way, but uh, it's to describe really what our work is about when it comes to competences, so really the way you do things, uh, but also um, your attitudes so or the way you are when you work. And I think it's really a, um, a framework that allows to describe that to a certain extent and, and pretty generic, of course, um, but at least that's that's what it still is for me today. Uh, yeah, I think it was one of the intentions, not the only one. Uh, recognition is also behind, of course. Um, but let's say if I should summarize it, that, that's the that's what I would say. Yeah. For me, um, and still today, and I keep coming back to that. Uh, well, th there was a need which was not necessarily expressed, but I think, so it was more about sensing, and I'm not sure uh, if I, back then it was really uh, right sensing, but it led to, to to the process, but to really have a space where we gather, uh, as I said at the beginning, what we are doing that describes the competences, more or less generic competences that youth workers working internationally uh, might have or might develop or acquire. Um, we had the portfolio of the Council of Europe, uh, which is already going a little bit more in an assessment uh, type of uh, tool. Uh, but let's say that was something, and I'm talking for myself at least, that I need. And then a way to bring a bit of this dimension of what's happened, what happens in your stomach when you work. So your intuition, your this magic I always talk about, which is present in the model, um, all your emotions, your feeling, to really give enough space for this to be in the picture and not only talking about uh, skills and knowledge, which is super important, but which to be activated needs all the rest around. So um, 
I think it's, I don't know if it's really something we sensed or something we wished, uh, probably a bit of both, but to have something that combines these dimensions, that was for me really uh, the moment, uh, I would say. Yeah. yeah, working more in the structures already back then, and <laughs> I can uh, see two um, directions where it at the time came from, where we sensed it very clearly. One was Uh, <clears throat> after the critical phase of the implementation of use bars, uh, use workers were the biggest group of people who constantly asked, where is recognition for our work? So that made us here think uh, either we go direction to develop a use bus with a specific concept uh, to recognize use workers' engagement within international activity But we didn't develop it stronger here for the time being, but thought more in the context of the European training strategy, what is really needed to improve um, quality in, in youth worker education and how can we um, start looking closer on it. And this was for us, and I mentioned it earlier, to look into the competence focus and then starting to develop a competence model also for youth workers with the challenges that I described again earlier, what would it look like? How would it be perceived? Uh, would we manage? Uh, can we do it outside an academic framework to provide it as a, as a really support tool within the youth work field? How would people appreciate it, but for us it was clear that this, uh, yeah, to try this challenge at the, and adventure at the time back was was a kind of obvious. In terms of intentions, um, I think we've, we've mentioned some of the words already, but recognition uh, was of, of use work Prof, youth workers profession or at least occupational profile, if you want to put it in different words, was definitely uh, a very important element. Um, support quality development or quality youth work and, and youth work development was another one. Um, develop also a kind of a consensus around a set of generic competence area or generic competences uh, was also um, an intention and then to really support youth workers in in working more on competence development with a basis they could look at, they could disregard eventually or, but at least they would have something, a reference they could use. Um, and then there was again, as I said, this, this other dimension, which was to bring together um, the stomach and the head, so to say. So um, yeah, that's what I would say as a summary, at least of, of the intentions initially, because it, it moved since, but uh, yeah. So I'm trying not to repeat, but formulate it a bit uh, differently. Maybe I, for me, the main intention was also to give wordings because this is an experience that we had again. I'm referring always to USPA. Sorry for that, but this this opportunity to provide people a language for what they are doing because that's very clearly uh, looking into the competence model that it gives a word that it gives you a wording. You can and this is a feedback that we get a lot. You get a language that you can use how to describe your work. That's that's one. And it was also one of the intention very concretely in terms of recognition. Then the second intention, which is of course not fulfilled yet, it's still an intention is to use it as a quality support tool within training and education of youth workers, either within our system or to offer it to others. And that's for me a remaining challenge, but is an intention. And the third intention that's issue why we kept attitudes because all other competence model which existed in qualification framework debates now at, at national level mainly, they redefined let's say attitudes and, and turned it around in other more easier for them ways. So what we decided to keep the word uh, to keep the context of attitudes within this framework and even at the behavior, which was a, was a debate. Mm -hmm. But also really the intention was to enable people to start thinking about it, to start, start talking about these dimensions, which at least from, from my interest is very much the, the connected to the value base of youth work as well. 
to bring this into language. That's the reason why we have the competence definition as we have it, which is in discussions with academics, sometimes really a problem because they want more uh, whatever, they want a competence definition, which is much more connected to their, their world or to the way how they deal with it. But we keep this attitude level which is um, not the easiest to work with, which everybody knows who ever tried it, but we think it's worthless because it shows really is connected to the value base of use work. Mm -hmm. And that's, that was already from the beginning an intention yeah. because we decided to keep it and even enlarged it to behavior with all the discussions that you can have around behavior and behaviorism behind what does this mean. always an invitation to uh, look at it, to test it, to use it as a reflection tool. And I always add, and it, interestingly enough, I also had sometimes criticism from youth workers saying, you cannot say that, but I still say it. If, if for any reason it doesn't uh, help or it's not relevant, it's also okay to say this tool is not for me, as long as you know why you disregard it, which means that you went through it, you explored it, you reflect upon it, you, I don't know, discussed about it with your colleagues, and then you say, I can take this part, or don't take it at all, or yes, this really helps, but it's really this invitation, I think, to, to, to test it. Our message was be still the same. What I would um, strengthen at the time being is to use it also now to reflect on a, being a youth worker as a political being, because I think it can really help to think about, first of all, the own professional pathway and where are you in this moment, but also what do you need to develop further and how do you see education and training of youth workers around you and do you need to do something around to do either improve quality, to care for better conditions for, for youth workers themselves, so I think it, it it has the potential of a political, uh, let's say, to act as a basis for political um, action, and that I would very uh, strongly recommend to to use because uh, when we look around into youth work, education and training, or the position of youth workers, I think there's a lot to, still to be done mm. in terms of recognition <coughs> and political engagement, also for youth work, but also for the position of youth workers. So that's one. And then the very personal one, that's for me, um, because I get the feedback a lot, it's easy to read. It looks complex from the beginning, but then I get a lot of feedback, ah, but it's it's actually, it's not so complex. So read it, as Giselle said, but see also what touches you. Where are your resonations in this regard? And then follow this path, because there might be something in, in, in it for you. Mm -hmm. so that's, I thought to say it's the greatest competence model ever was quite visionary, but um, for me, it's really that it becomes in the future that you can say that this is one of the tools. So there's no pretension that it's the only one. I think that's a, that is one of the tools that contributes it and still contributes to youth work development at European level. That it is a material people know about, can refer to can also uh, be critical about, that's all fine, but that it has a place and a role in youth work development at European level. That would be good. Yeah. My hope goes a bit wider and is a bit, let's say, taking into account what is going on at the moment. So what I hope with the competence focus, where the competence model is contributing to, that we don't foster so much these individual tendencies that we have in society, that people really take it up on what it is, yeah, to, to use it for recognition and, and also discussions in whatever way, but uh, to take it up now also to um, for collective purposes, mm. because that's the bit of a risk at the moment that, of course, this competence focus that we have worked a lot on supports a lot of individual tendencies that we have. And at the moment, I hope that we get back with the political dimensions, with solidarity, um, also with a view more on how can we use it collectively, that this uh, contributes to quality development, 
but for, puts the focus now back again on society development, which is again a very political mm -hmm. issue at the moment. Uh, that uh, to put the competence focus in the right position, yeah, as among others. So that's that's and then that then the, the we are where Giselle <clears throat> was to say that the the model itself contributes to quality development. Mm -hmm. That's my so my vision is always a bit wider than so it's one among others. It's a big one, it's a good one, and this is also how people take it up whenever, at least I have super positive feedback whenever I present it, even in critical contexts. And I'm, as I forgot, I'm discussing now with university professors in the German speaking area about it and how can it be um, adapted and contribute to curriculum development. So it's appreciated very much. So we also have a very open minded context around us to go beyond our usual uh, context and to discuss it with other stakeholders. So I hope that there it can really um, support development, but that it's really taken up in, a, let's say, in the way what we intended it for. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the point. Uh, Maybe to add that it's... Uh This, this model is not supposed to be uh, dry, it has to live, so that we always tell anyone who is using it, developing things around it, uh, having insights about it, uh, to share that with us, because we cannot always, of course, uh, adjust the competence model, revise it and so on, but we really try to take into account what comes back to us um, and and to ensure that this lives uh, through and, and evolves. So I. I think that's that's a message I would re yeah I would like to pass. Yeah, for me, my last message is only don't be afraid of complexity. It's uh, sometimes uh, very helpful to just confront yourself with it, and I think in itself it has we took good care and it's fun. I mean, we had a lot of fun we while developing. We are still working together. <laughs> we survived two competence developments, so still like um, each other. It's exactly, fine. exactly, and we are still continuing, knowing although all the challenges. And please keep on going with it, also long term. It's also a thing that has to grow. That's mm -hmm. also a good experience of it that it grew over a time and then so yeah grow with it we hope this video contributed to you learning about the competence-based development for youth workers